So I'm going to keep this pretty casual, and I've met most of you. Um, but as you know, I'm Taylor, and today I'm going to be talking about living as a young adult carrier of ALD. Um, I'm from the US, obviously. I'm 24, so I guess I'm still considered a young adult, but um, I'm just going to be talking about sort of growing up as a carrier um, and what things look like for me now. So back in the 90s, um, someone in my dad's distant family found out that they had ALD, um, which actually when they were diagnosed, it was still called Schildler, Schildler's disease. Um, and so my dad and his twin brother did get tested and they did find out that they had the gene um, and they were told that they had AMN. Um, but back then there was very little known about men with AMN eventually getting cerebral disease. So my dad didn't get any um, MRIs or anything like that. Um, he was basically just Don Lorenzo's oil at the time and was just told that he would eventually probably need a cane when he was older. So with my mom, and my dad just thought, you know, wasn't really that big of a deal. So when my dad started experiencing behavioral changes um, in around 2001, um, my mom was pretty quickly concerned. My dad was always really neat and organized and he started leaving things around the house. He started sleeping with the lights on. Um, he was always really thrifty with money, but he started spending more money. So definitely things that, you know, you would just notice about a person, but probably wouldn't cause too much concern. Um, he and my mom ended up going to a marriage counselor um, and the marriage counselor said that he should get an MRI to rule out brain cancer and obviously the MRI was what showed that my dad had cerebral ALD um, and that it was pretty advanced so my dad didn't really have any options um, but at the time that he was diagnosed in 2001 my family was told that since ALD is an X-linked disease that this made me and also my half-sister, Tina, who's 10 years older than me, um, a carrier. And they told my family that we didn't need to do confirmatory testing um, since if a male has an X-linked disease, his daughters will always be carriers. And that we didn't really have anything to worry about. They said, you know, when she gets older and she has kids, she'll have a 50% chance of passing this down. But until then, this isn't something that you have to think about. And of course, at the time, um, my family's focus was on my dad. Um, he progressed very quickly and um, passed away about two years after his diagnosis. Um, and he was on hospice care. Um, so most of my memories of him are from when he was sick. Um, and I'll kind of loop back to this later, but um, right there is a picture of me when I was 12 at the Kennedy Creeker Institute in Baltimore. And that was the first time that I saw a genetic counselor and also saw an ALD specialist, uh, Dr. Raymond, um, who was my dad's doctor. So obviously everyone here knows about X-linked inheritance, um, but basically if the female has the gene variant, and I don't use the terminology like carrier versus patient or affected versus unaffected because I feel like in the case of ALD, those words just don't fit. Um, so if a female has the gene variant, then there's a 50% chance that her son will have the gene variant and that her daughter would have the gene variant. And then with a male, there's a 100% chance that any daughter he has will have the gene variant and a 0% chance that his son will have it. So before my dad passed away, um, he and my mom started the run for ALD along with some family friends to raise awareness of ALD and money for research because at the time there just wasn't a ton of research going on. Um, it was mostly done by Dr. Mosier, who was at Kennedy Krieger. And after he passed away, um, and as I got a little bit older, um, my mom encouraged me to start getting involved in the run, and I started sharing my dad's story. Um, I would go around to the classes at my school and tell them about the upcoming run and you know, see people's parents donate, people turn out. And that was really the first time that I realized you know, that sharing your story could have a positive impact. Um, I also always loved writing, so when I was in fifth grade, um, I wrote an article with the help of my teacher, um, and we sent it to a local magazine uh, to be published. So as I said, when my dad was diagnosed, my mom was told that she didn't really have to worry about me being a carrier, um, and that it wasn't really something that 
I needed to know or think about until I was older and ready to have kids. Um, but my mom decided that she thought that this was something that I should know. Um, so she first told me that I was a carrier around the age of eight. I don't remember it at all. So this has just been something that I've known for as long as I can remember. Um, but she just felt that knowing from a young age would be better. And I think she also knew, you know, as I got older, um, in the case of ALD, it's not that hard to figure out if you just look on the internet. You know, it's not like it's something that could be kept hidden from me. Um, and she also thought that just because of what I had gone through that I was mature for my age and that it was something that she felt like she could tell me. So she re-explained it every few years um, in a way that was age appropriate. Um, I don't remember ever feeling scared about it. You know, she ensured me that when I got older and wanted to have kids, that there were options to have kids that didn't have ALD. And that's really the main thing I remember, just knowing that, you know, I probably wouldn't have kids the normal way, but that if I wanted to, I still could. So when I was 12, she took me to see a genetic counselor and an ALD specialist. And this is when I remember first hearing that carriers or females with ALD could get symptoms. Um, because growing up, you know, I remember just being told and assured, oh, I'm just a carrier. Like, I'm so lucky to just be a carrier and that this disease will never affect me. Um, but at the time, since this was like 12 years ago, it was still thought that symptoms in carriers were rare and also mild. Um, and so I also didn't really worry about it at the time. And because I knew that if I did eventually get symptoms, which I thought I probably wouldn't, that they wouldn't affect me for like 30 or 40 years even. Um, but my mom really felt that it was important for me to stay connected with the ALD community. Even though I had a bunch of family members with ALD, um, genetic diseases can cause a lot of issues in families, as some of you may have may know. So we sort of disconnected from my dad's side of the family, so I didn't have anyone that I knew um, and could talk to about ALD. Um, but going to these conferences, I could just see with my own eyes that there was a lot of women with canes and walkers and wheelchairs, and it was really confusing for me because I remember being told that symptoms in women were really rare, but I could see with my own eyes that there was a lot of women with symptoms. So it was a really confusing time, um, and it led to a lot of questions and not a lot of answers. Um, but overall, I would say that knowing from such a young age gave me a positive psychological adjustment period. Like, it's just been something that's been part of my life for as long as I can remember, so I never really had that like shock experience of finding out that I was a carrier. Um, so it's just something that I've grown to be used to. Uh, but nonetheless, you know, like a lot of people still have experienced feelings of anxiety, depression, isolation, and you know, of course it's impossible to know how much that's related to ALD, um, but you know, losing a parent at a young age can definitely cause those things. So all in all, I just feel so thankful that I've known from a young age, and I also feel really lucky that in my family that I inherited the gene from my dad because I know that if my mom was the carrier, I might have waited to get tested until I was older. And research shows that there's actually more stress in knowing that you have a 50% chance of inheriting a gene and being forced to wait to undergo testing than actually just getting the testing done. Um, so I do feel really lucky that I was able to know from a young age. At this point, I have undergone testing um, just because my genetic counselor, who's actually the same one that I saw when I was 12, um, when I got on my health insurance, when I got my first job, she was like, you should just get it done to have it on your record. And because when you eventually do IVF with PGT, you're going to need your exact variant. So I actually was feeling more stress of what if the test comes back and it's negative? Like my whole life I've gone, um, it did not. But I actually did have a reason for that because <laughs> Um, my mom and dad had troubles getting pregnant, which we now know is because my dad had a low sperm count because of ALD. At the time, we didn't, they didn't know that. But so I was born through artificial insemination, and so my mom would always joke that what if they mixed it up? Um, so she did give me a little bit of a reason in the back of my mind to think my test would come back negative, but it didn't. Um, so, you know, in a weird way, I feel like getting my test and seeing my variant, like, made me kind of feel closer to my dad, to my family, especially because it's just been so long, you know, since he passed away, like almost 20 years. Um, but yeah, I mean, all in all, I just feel really prepared for the future in terms of reproduction. I've known and know all the details of all my different options. 
Um, and I feel pretty confident in what I feel like I'll eventually do one day. I've talked about it in detail with my boyfriend, so he's done his own research. Um, and, you know, while the most stressful part of this, I would say, is the symptoms, I do feel like I've slowly been able to learn about them over the years and also just watch as the research continues to develop. Um, and I've also been able to be part of research. So right now I'm in an observational study. Um, and I think I'm the only like asymptomatic woman. So it's really easy to see myself like on the data charts, even though I don't think I'm technically supposed to know what data point I am. Um, but it's been really great to be part of research and feel like that I'm advancing the chance of having a potential treatment for when I get older and probably do have symptoms. Um, and I guess I should also add that we now think that about 90% of females with ALD get symptoms. Um, so I kind of consider myself more pre-symptomatic than asymptomatic, just because you know the chance is probably pretty high. Um, but I guess I don't have an inspirational message of like trying to be super positive. I just feel confident that there will be treatments just because we've seen so much done in ALD over the past decade that that's really the thing that I that I stick to and that's what helps me not worry about it like on a day-to-day -day basis. So just really quickly, I also wanna talk about uh, my organization that I founded, Remember the Girls. So when I was uh, 17, I realized that there was other X-linked diseases, like it's something that I never realized. Um, but I learned of these diseases like Duchenne muscular dystrophy and hemophilia and found out that the females in those communities were facing similar issues that we were in ALD where, you know, they were long thought to be just carriers and so their symptoms weren't really understood. Um, there wasn't as much research on them and they also had to face these difficult decisions in terms of family planning um, and also just the like psychosocial impacts of being a carrier of this excellent condition as well. Um, so I went over our main concerns but um, there's also a lot of other things, you know, finding a doctor that believes you, discussing carrier status with partners, telling your daughter that she may be a carrier, just a lot of different challenges. We also conducted a research with a genetic counseling student um, where we talked about learning of your carrier status. The mean age of these research participants was 29, um, and only 16% of people learned before the age of 18. Um, but the mean age that people believed carrier should be told was 11. Um, we also did a poll in our Facebook group, Remember the Girls, which has about 1,400 members. Um, and you can see that 72% of people wish that they learned that they were a carrier earlier in life. So I feel like there's a lot of, I guess the word is like paternalism in like genetic testing where they say, oh, you don't need to know that you're a carrier you know, it's way too stressful for these poor girls to know that they're carriers. And I just think that that's total BS, frankly. I think that we need to find empowerment in knowing our genetic knowledge and knowing that we have choices and decisions to make when we get older and that it's not something that we need to be so afraid of. Um, but of course, there still are potential drawbacks of knowing your early knowledge, like stress and worry, having to make hard decisions, um, but in my opinion, I do feel like that the benefits of knowing that you're a carrier early before having kids definitely outweigh the drawbacks. So just my message to the other young carriers in the room. I know this is kind of corny, but this is a quote that I really like. Um, the flower that blooms in adversity is the rarest and most beautiful. Why am I going to cry right now? This is so embarrassing. Okay, I'm not going to read it, but I just, I like this quote because it says like rare and yeah. That was really embarrassing. Okay, well, if you want to get in touch with me, um, here's my email. And if you're not already a part of Remember the Girls, um, we have our private support group um, that's just for carriers or mothers of carriers um, and would love for you to join. So thank you, guys.